My name is Brendan Namira. I'm a research leader in the Food Safety Intervention Technologies Research Unit at the USDA's Eastern Regional Research Center. And I, along with my colleagues, Glenn Boyd and Joe Seitz, are the authors of Cold Plasma Rapid Decontamination of Food Contact Surfaces Contaminated with Salmonella Biofilms, a paper in Journal of Food Science. Food can be contaminated with pathogenic bacteria in a number of different ways. And one of the most important is by contact with tables, conveyor belts, uh, food processing equipment, and so on, uh, that has been contaminated with human pathogens. Now, on these surfaces, the pathogens can form complex, durable communities of bacteria called biofilms. They're very hard to remove with conventional sanitizers. So what we were trying to achieve in this research was to examine cold plasma as a means to address and to eliminate these bacteria. Cold plasma has been around for a long time. Are used to clean electronics and also to treat plastics, glass, and textiles and other materials for surface preparations. For foods and food contact surfaces, it's really only been in the last 10 or 15 years that people have started to look at this seriously. Uh, unlike conventional sanitizers, which use chlorine or other active ingredients in a chemical uh, aqueous wash or, or rinse, cold plasma doesn't use any inputs uh, in terms of chem reactive chemical species. The only inputs to the system are air and electricity. And because there's no water and there's no solution that's applied, there's nothing to rinse off afterwards. Well, what we did is we grew salmonella biofilms on glass slides. And we let them grow for one, two, or three days so they'd be nice and durable when we were going to test them. And we took those salmonella biofilms and put them onto a conveyor belt that we passed underneath a cold plasma emitter head. We did this at a couple of different distances, one at five centimeters, and then repeated everything at seven and a half centimeters. We tested these, so th adjusted the speed of the conveyor belt so that it would be exposed for five seconds, 10 seconds, or 15 seconds. And during the course of this, we repeated this uh, by adjusting the frequency of electricity that we used to generate the plasma. After we treated the biofilms, we took the plates and recovered them to see how much of the biofilm survived the treatment. What we found is that for the one day, two day, and three day biofilms, they all responded fairly comparably. So the age and durability of the biofilm didn't interfere with the efficacy of the treatment. And what we found is that a five second treatment of the cold plasma biofilms was able to reduce this by 1.5 logs, and that's about 97.3%. A 10 second treatment was able to reduce it by 1.8 logs, and that's a 98.5% reduction. And then a 15 second treatment gave us a 2.13 log reduction. That's a 99.3% reduction of the salmonella biofilm on these slides. And what we also found is that, unlike some other studies by other researchers who indicated that the uh, frequency of electricity had some bearing on the efficacy of the plasma, that wasn't the case in our study. Varying the frequency of the plasma here didn't seem to uh, interfere with the efficacy of the process. Increasing the distance from 5 centimeters to 7.5 centimeters tended to reduce the, the efficacy a little bit. The industry needs treatments that will effectively reduce biofilms such as salmonella uh, on foods and food contact surfaces. And the process that we've developed here and that we're exploring is very rapid, it doesn't use any water, it doesn't use any uh, sanitizers, and it's chlorine-free. And so what we're expecting is that there will be applications for this process that is zero contact and doesn't leave any residues and doesn't have any, it doesn't introduce any water up front, and it doesn't have anything that needs to be rinsed off at the end. But we're going to try to make this technology even faster and even more effective by combining it with scrubbing uh, applications and also by combining it with other antimicrobial interventions. That's for food contact surfaces, such as belts and, and surface prep areas. But we're also continuing a lot of research in applying cold plasma directly to fruits and vegetables, such as nuts, berries, and tomatoes. We think that it has a couple of different applications that might be very interesting for fresh and fresh cut fruits and vegetables. Cold plasma is still a research subject, and that FDA is still working on approvals for how to use it in industry.